Good morning and God bless you. Welcome to Destiny Church. We are so grateful, so thankful. The Lord has given us another chance today. Good morning. God bless you. God bless you. Welcome. The recording has started. Good morning. Good morning, Destiny family. Good morning. We see you out there. Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome. Good morning, Facebook. Good morning, YouTube. Good morning, freeconferencecall.com or wherever you're witnessing and worshiping with us today. Good morning. Hallelujah. Praise God. Come on, call somebody, text somebody, yell in the other room, tell them, come worship with us here at Destiny Church. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Good morning and God bless you. Welcome, welcome. Hallelujah. Who's ready to worship and praise the Lord today? I know I am. Happy Sunday, everybody. Good morning. Thank you, Lord, for another day. Thank you for another opportunity. Hallelujah. Can't do it without you, God. Come on, go call somebody. Text somebody. Tell them come on and worship with us. I can't live without your love, Lord. Thank you, thank you. Glory to God, glory to God. Hallelujah. This is just a wonderful day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning and God bless you and welcome to Destiny Church here in Waldorf, Maryland. I am excited. We are excited and blessed that the Lord has allowed us this opportunity to join in together and worship him in spirit and in truth. And we are excited for you joining us. And so thank you. And we thank God. Listen, my name is uh, Gary Walsh Jr. And I'm blessed to be the pastor and servant leader here at Destiny Church. And if this is your first time worshiping with us, you are our special guest. Welcome. If this is your, your second, your fifth, your 100th, your 1,000th time worshiping, worshiping with us, good morning and welcome to you as well. We are just so blessed and excited that God has given this opportunity and this space to worship him in spirit and in truth. I mean, we're not going to let a pandemic stop us from worshiping the Lord. That's why we're here worshiping online here at Destiny Church. We can't, still un unable to get into to the sanctuary, but we've made the sanctuary wherever you are in the space of your home, your car, or wherever you are, God is with us. And so we're going to worship him in spirit and in truth here at Destiny Church. So listen, I want to start off our service by reading a passage of scripture and getting into some prayer. Uh, this morning, I want to read a passage uh, from the 146th Psalm. That's Psalm 146 from the New International Version. And this is what it says. It says, praise the Lord. 
You got to just shout that when you, when you read that. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, my soul. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. Do not put your trust in princes. That's human beings, man. In human beings who cannot say. When their spirit departs, they return to the ground. And on that very day, their plans come to nothing. Blessed are those who help whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the application of his holy and righteous word. I've read for you the first five verses of Psalm 146. May you be blessed by the reading of the word. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Our Father and our God, how we thank you for this day. We thank you for being so good and gracious to us to allow us to see it. Lord, we recognize you didn't have to do it, but you did. You woke us up this morning, got us going on our way. And for that, we want to tell you, thank you. Lord, you're so amazing, so awesome, so wonderful to us, better than we've ever been to ourselves. And again, we just want to tell you, thank you for that. Father, we pray that you'd have your way today in our lives, have your way in this service, God. We want to ask you that you'd please, Lord, forgive us of our sins, wipe our slates clean. Thank you for giving us another chance. I pray, oh God, that you bless each and every individual under the sound of my voice, whether they're watching this broadcast live, listening to it as a recording or however you're bringing it to them, God. We're praying for blessings right now in the name of Jesus. God, we're going to get out of the way and let you have your way, Father, because we need you right now. There's somebody here, God, who, who's dealing with some issues, Father. Yeah, even me, Father. And there's some things that are going on on the inside, God. And we know we need you to reach in there, Lord, and do what you do best, and that's bless. So, Father, please have your way today, Lord, that we know for sure that we had an encounter with you, O oh God. We also ask, Lord, that you bless today's offering, that it may be used for the upkeep of your kingdom here on earth. We pray we pray that you bless the gift and the giver, O oh God. And Lord, we're also asking that you'd expand our territory so much so that our cups run it over and we can be a blessing to somebody else. Father, we want to tell you, thank you in advance for victory. And we pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Together in love, we say amen, amen, and praise God. Praise God. Well, good morning again, and God bless you. Uh, welcome to Destiny Church uh, here in Waldorf, Maryland. We are so excited that the Lord has allowed us this opportunity to come and worship him in spirit and in truth. And again, if you are a first-time visitor or a visitor to Destiny Church, welcome you are our special guest. And as such, we want to share some information with you. If you want to learn more about our church or more about our ministry, uh, you can go to our website. It's www.destinychurchmd.org. That's destinychurchmd, as in Maryland.org. You can go there and get more information uh, about our, our ministry, about our church. And listen, if you have any prayer requests or a praise report you want to share with us, whether you are a member of the church or not, please email us at prayerbuilds at gmail.com. That's prayerbuilds, B-U-I-L-D-S at gmail.com. We are a praying church and it's our goal to turn prayer requests into praise reports. So send in your prayer requests and your praise reports to prayerbuilds at gmail.com. You can also use that email address if you really want to reach out to me for counseling or mentorship or, or anything you else you want to know about the church. You can email us at prayerbuilds at gmail.com. And then also, if you want to stay in the loop about what's going on here at Destiny Church, you can text the word loop, L-O-O-P, to 240-377-0811. That's 240-377-0811. Just text the word loop to that phone number, and that'll keep you in the loop about what's going on. We have some exciting things that we're doing here at Destiny Church, uh, we have Transformation Tuesdays, which is at 6.30. Uh, every other Transformation Tuesday, we have a, a youth uh, video chat with the pastor. It's where our young people and young adults can get online and just have a, a 
conversations as a group uh, with with me, the pastor. And so uh, we like to to dialogue with our young people, pray with our young people, just hear what's going on with them. Because you know what? In this season, in this pandemic season, in this uh, this season of protest and, and, and crazy political climate, our young people are being affected as well. And so I like to connect with them and, and just reassure them and remind them that God is still for them and with them. And so listen, if you're a young person or if you have a young person, have them join with us on uh, every other Tuesday. So that'll be this coming Tuesday at 6.30 via Zoom. Zoom. You can go to our Facebook page um, to find out the information. I also sent it out via the text message uh, service. And so at si- that's at 6.30 every other Tuesday. So that'll be this, this Tuesday at 6.30. But then at 7.30, Transformation Tuesday continues with our adult Bible study every Tuesday night via Zoom uh, that the Lord allows. At 7.30, we have our Transformation Tuesday adult Bible study. And right now we're doing a, a Christian character clinic where you have to understand that that we as Christians need to be growing every day. And so just, you know, showing up for service on Sunday is not enough. We we have things we need to do to work on ourselves throughout our days, throughout our weeks, throughout our months. And so at, at uh, Adult Bible Study, we're studying uh, the Christian Character Clinic so we can be better, brighter, and bolder as God has created us to be. So we want to invite you to join us at 730 on Tuesday for that Adult Bible Study Transformation Tuesdays. And also, um, I want to thank each and every one of you who are being obedient to the Lord and being led by the Lord uh, regarding your tithes and your offering. We thank God for you. Uh, And so if the Lord has placed it on your heart to participate in tithes and offering, it is totally between you and God. It is totally up to you. There's no obligation to do so, to be a family member here at Destiny Church. We praise God for you regardless. But listen, if the Lord is leading you to be a part of uh, tithes and offerings here at Destiny, you can do so uh, by going to our website and uh, clicking on online donations. It'll take you to the Givelify app where you can uh, give as the Lord is leading you to give. You just, Or you can just go to your uh, app store on your smart device, look for the Givelify app. And uh, once you have that, you can look up Destiny Church in Waldorf, Maryland. You should see a picture of our logo and maybe a small picture of myself. And you can give as the Lord leads. And we pray that God is continuing to bless you, guide you, and lead you. Regardless if you're giving or not, God is still giving to us. Amen? Amen and praise God. Um, What I want to do is I want to play another selection. And then uh, we're going to move right into the word of God. Listen, you still have time to go call somebody, shout at somebody, uh, yell at somebody to come worship with us. We're here here at Destiny Church and we love the Lord. Amen. Amen. Seen your faith. 
Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, give him some worship and praise right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. Have your way, Father, right now in the name of Jesus. Open up our hearts to receive you, God. Open up our hearts to be blessed by you, God. Anything in there not like you, please remove it, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Mm. Isn't God good? Isn't he wonderful? So awesome and amazing is our God. Amen. Amen. Songs called says, do what you are famous for. That lets me know that there's somebody out there that's not ashamed, not afraid to give witness to the glory of God. Let that be you. Let that be me. Let that be us. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, I want you to please uh, turn with us to the book of Isaiah. Yep, we're back in Isaiah. We've been getting so uh, blessed and encouraged these last several weeks in the book of Isaiah. So we're back to Isaiah uh, chapter 43. Isaiah 43. We'll be looking at the, the uh, first two verses of Isaiah 43. And uh, listen, if you are are new and you may you maybe never heard this before your bible the book uh comes with a free gift and it's called the table of contents it's in the front of the book and what you do is you turn to the table of contents you look up the uh, book of isaiah which is in the old testament and it tells you exactly where to turn excuse me we can't be so deep that we're not able to use what's free amen amen isaiah the 43rd chapter, and welcome to you, to each of you who just joined in with us, just tuning in. God bless you and welcome. Uh, Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, verses 1 and 2, and I'll be reading from the New International Version today, and listen, this is what I want you to do. If you've got it, if you've got Isaiah 43, I want you to yell out in a loud voice. I mean, I want you to shout, I've got it. Praise God. Praise God. I think I heard some of y'all out there hollering, I got it. Listen, somebody walking by or in the next room or down the hall is wondering what it is that you have. You need to tell them, I've got the word of God and you need to get it for yourself. Mm. Isaiah 43 verses 1 and 2. This is what it says in the word of our God. It says, but now, somebody say, but now. But now, this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I, this is God talking, have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. Mm, God just claimed you. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. Mm, 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 mm. That's a good word from the Lord right there. You know what? Let me read this part again in, in verse 
is verse 1 of uh, B. It says, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. I need somebody to tap yourself on the chest and say, I am his. I am his. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good news today. That's the good news today. So listen, I want to put a title to this text and talk about it for the short time. That is ours, Reasons to Remain Encouraged. Reasons to Remain Encouraged. I need your prayers this morning. Reasons to Remain Encouraged. Mm. You know, there have been uh, psychological studies that show many people don't realize when they are depressed, struggling with anxiety, fears, or frustration until after they've heard something that encourages them in the positive. Let me say that again. Let me say that again. There are people, psychological studies have shown that there are some people who don't realize that they are depressed, struggling with anxiety or fears or frustration until after they've heard something that encourages them in the positive. In other words, there are some people, many of us, who until we hear something positive that moves us, we didn't realize that we were going through what we were going through. We didn't realize that it was weighing down on us the way it was weighing down down on us. Many people, unbeknownst to themselves, have learned to overlook the signs that there may be something that is weighing them down or wearing them out in the negative and have for most parts learned to cover it up or ignore them altogether. Is that you? Look straight ahead. Don't tell on yourself, but this message is definitely for each of us at one time or another. There are many of us who've gotten proficient, we've becoming, become almost professionals at covering up what's going on on the inside. There's some of us who have struggles, but we don't like to show it. There's some of us who are dealing with depression, but we try to dismiss it. There's some of us who have struggles and stress and anxiety, which can cause other things, but we try to cover it up and act like everything is all right all the time time. The truth is, many of us are privately going through some ups and downs that we never intended to have to deal with the way we've been dealing with them as much as we've been dealing with them. Come on, is that you? This is, come on, I need you just to be honest with yourself and the Lord this morning. Many of us have had things come up, come, come at us, yay, even this year, whoo, 2020. And many of us have had stuff come at us that, that we did not expect to, to come at us the way it did. It slapped us in the face. It slapped us in the head. Yay, for some of us, it even slapped us in the heart. Are, am I bowling, bowling on your street yet? There's some of us who've had to deal with some things that we thought we could just deal with on a minute level, but it, it began to maximize itself and cause us to feel restricted, cause us to feel uh, frustrated, cause us to feel some anxiety. Is anybody under the sound of my voice ever been there? Maybe, watch this, maybe you might not be there right now, or maybe you might be the one I'm talking about who've been able to cover it up and, and hide it in your life, loves, and labors. But honestly, I'm not trying to get in your business. I'm trying to help each of us unlock some blessings that have been waiting on us in life, love, and labors. Because truly, if we are walking around and trying and holding on to some discouragement, some disappointment, some doubt, some fear, fear, some frustrations, some some whatever, you fill in the blank in the negative. If we're walking around just toting that stuff around, it's going to weigh us down, wear us out, and it's working on the good part in us. I'm talking to somebody this morning. I, yeah, I'm even talking to myself. Can I be honest with somebody and be, be, be transparent? I know for myself, in my own life at times, there have been some circumstances and some situations that have happened. And yes, I hid it like so you wouldn't see it. Yes, I carried it around like a backpack, but I've got to let somebody know that I even too have had my own burdens. I've had my own pains. I've had my own anxieties and fears weigh on me so much so that all I could do was cover it up. You can't, but when it comes to those type of things, let me help you. You can't shop your way out. You can't get your 
your hair fix your way out. You can't make up it and cover it up your way out. You can't buy your way out. You just got to deal with it. Or better yet, allow the Lord to deal with it with you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't want anybody to think for a minute that I'm immune to that because I'm a pastor, a uh, minister of the gospel. No, I'm a man. I'm a human being. I got stuff going on just like you do. And right now we need to shame the devil and tell the truth that we've got some things that wear on us, that have broken our hearts, that have messed up, messed up our minds, that have got us, gotten us off every now and then. If you can't say amen, say ouch. If you don't want anybody just to know exactly what you're going through just raise an eyebrow blink profusely do what you gotta do but it's time that we remain encouraged because god has got us every step of the way i know i know see there were some times there were some times yeah even in my own life in my own life that i was trying to coast through these things but in, in in the midst of coasting trying to coast through some things I felt like I just wanted to curse each and every day that I woke up I've been there I've been through some pain I've been through some bereavement I've been through some some anxiety and I know watch this this is these negative emotions and negative feelings are not just for us adults our young people can go through them too our young people that for various ages if they can feel it any type of emotion they can also feel anxiety they can also feel depression they can also feel fear and so that's why we got to watch out and get our worship on so we can be allow the lord to work it out yeah 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 it, it, it is not it's not a matter of your age. It's not even a matter of how long you've been serving the Lord. It's not a matter of, of who you are or how much money you make or don't make. Uh, these negative feelings and negative emotions can, can, can attack us at any given moment. But I, but I got I to gotta let somebody know. I got to let, let somebody know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in this life, uh, the Jesus had told us that in this life, there will be some trouble. There will be some tragedy. There will be some turmoil. And if you and I don't learn how to properly release, reset, and rejoice, let me say that again. If we don't properly learn how to release, reset, and rejoice, come what way, we might be subject to some recoil. Let me say that again so you don't miss it. And for those of you taking notes, take this down. If you and I don't learn how to properly release, reset, and rejoice, come what may, we may be subject to some recoil. Uh-huh, yeah, I said recoil, R-E-C-O-I-L, recoil, by definition means to suddenly spring or flinch back in fear, horror, or disgust. And you have to understand that sometimes some of the negatives that we hold on to can cause us to recoil physically, recoil emotionally, recoil relationally, and even recoil spiritually. Have you ever mm, found yourself going through something and you uh, all of a sudden become jump jumpy? You might not be jumpy physically, but you might be jumpy, jumpy internally. That's the recoil that I'm talking about. You just are afraid to move forward. You're just uh, uh, walking around with horror and disgust. You're walking around in fear. And if you don't learn, let me say it again, how to release, reset, and rejoice, come what may. In other words, no matter what, you may be subject to the recoil. I, I mean, think about it. Think about it. As, as as our country as a country we are currently going through some issues with with politics and and protest protest and and pandemic and any one of those things can compound with what's going on in our everyday personal lives is enough to cause any of us to want to throw in the towel and call it quits. But listen, I got a word for you this morning from the Lord. The Lord wanted me to share with you. I'm here on assignment, my friends. They wanted me to share with you that you don't have to recoil. You can rejoice. You can reset. You can release because we have reasons to remain encouraged in this season. The Lord says that we got, oh, he's given us a word that we can remain encouraged in this season. I understand 
That sometimes when you're going through what you're going through, you just don't feel like it. But I want to help somebody today as yea, even the Lord is helping me that we have reasons to remain encouraged in this season. And the first reason is we are God's creation. That's what it says right there in the text. And I want you to make this sermon personal. You got to say it, tap yourself on the chest and say, I am God's creation. That's reason number one. For you to stay encouraged. I am God's creation. Come on, somebody. I need you to shout it. I am God's creation. That means, devil, you can't have me. Enemy, you can't keep me down because I am God's creation. But it says it right there in verse 1a, but now. Somebody say, but now. That means right now. This is what the Lord is saying to you. He says, I'm right here in the text. You got your Bible still open? It says, this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, and when the Bible says Jacob and Israel, it's talking to every blood-bought believer. That's you and I. We are his creation, and that's why you have to stay encouraged. Woo! I'm, I feel like preaching today. Uh, you got to understand that negative emotions can play tricks on our minds. It can play tricks on us so much so that it might have us believing that we don't matter. But I've got to let somebody know you matter. Uh, young people, under the sound of my voice right now, you matter. I don't know who's out there listening to me right now, but you matter. Why? Because you are God's creation. You didn't do this by yourself. You didn't wake yourself up. You didn't get yourself going. We are God's creation. So let me let me let me see if I can help somebody today. You got to understand being God's creation means this. God doesn't make mistakes. God doesn't make junk. So when he created you and I, it wasn't an accident. I don't care who's trying to bully you. I don't care who said some negative things about you. I don't care who's tried to bring you down one way or another because they were inadequate within themselves. You are God's creation. You are not a mistake. You are not a mess. You are God's miracle. And he loves you. And that is reason to remain in courage. Listen, I've said this in many a sermon and it makes sense. And it's the truth that God said in the book of Genesis. You remember in Genesis, I think we talked about it even on last week. He says, let us create man in our image and in our likeness. And when he said that, he did it. OK, so when he created us in his image and in his likeness, he created us as greatness. You need to uh, kind of puff up your chest and hold your head up and let somebody know right now at the top of your lungs, I am God's creation. It doesn't matter what the doctor says. I mean, it matters. But the final say is God say it doesn't matter how much money you have or don't have. It doesn't matter what your grades used to be. You still have an opportunity. You still have a chance to make it and do it better because you're God's and you're blessed. Woo! I'm preaching today. So I know you've been going through some stuff. I know you've been dealing with some stuff. I know you've had some frustrations and some pains in your relationship, in your life, with your finances, with your job, in your school. It's all a possibility to get messed up. But God, I'm going there right now, but God can fix it if you let him because he, you are his. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's good news right there. What this really is telling me is that the word of God is so true because no matter how I feel about myself, no matter what somebody else says about me, no matter what I am going through, the Bible says and is tailored to teach us that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. In other words, let them mess up. Let everything go by the wayside. But God has got me because I'm his creation. Woo! That's good news. So that doesn't matter. What the doctor says is wrong with me. God is working on what's right with me. Ah! That's good news right there.
That's good news right there, that I am God's creation. You see, you see, when I'm God's creation, that means he's got blessings that are assigned to me. And what he's really waiting for us to do is get ready for what he's got. But watch this. If you're not ready, if I'm not ready, if I'm not working on who God created me to be, my blessings can't recognize me, so they're not coming to me. Come on, somebody, I'm preaching this thing. So watch this. That's why we've got to get our lives in order. We've got to be more obedient to the word of God. We've got to focus in more on the Father so what he has for me can get to me. Woo, yeah, 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 yeah. You looking for reasons? You're looking for reasons to remain encouraged. The first reason the Bible gives us, the, tailor, the text is tailored to teach us is, I am God's creation. Say, I am God's creation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But not only that, not only that, uh, not, if that's not the only reason. The first reason that we need to remain encouraged is because I am God's creation. But the second thing the text is telling the teacher is God is my redemption. Listen, if you're looking for reasons to remain encouraged in the days or whatever you're going through, the first reason is the text tells us is that I am God's creation. The second reason is God is my redemption. It says it right there in verse 1b of Isaiah 43. It says, do not fear. For I have, that's God, redeemed you. Uh, let me say it again because maybe you missed it. Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. If you're looking for reasons to remain encouraged, if you need a, a, a biblical pick-me-up, huh, the Bible says the first reason is, uh -huh, yeah, yeah, I am his creation. The second reason is God is my redemption. Are y'all seeing the relationship in this thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am his and he is mine. But watch what he does for me. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. God is my redemption redemption. And in verse 1b, it says, do not fear for I have redeemed you. Now that word redeemed um, or redemption means to be bought with a price. You remember that the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. That means, watch this, that when I sin, when we sin and we all sin, because you know, the Bible does say that all for all have sinned, not y'all have sinned. In other words, you can't just point at other people at what they've done wrong because we've all done some wrong uh, in and outside of ourselves. But listen, the Bible says that the wages of sin is death, right? That means it doesn't mean it necessarily that you're going to and I'm going to physically die, but something about us or that was supposed to come to us can die because of our sin. And so that wages of sin, the price of sin is death. But watch this. Instead of us dying, instead of us having to pay the cross, paying the cost, uh, through the death of something, God did this for us. God paid the price by sending his darling son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for you and I. He paid a debt huh, that we could not pay. In other words, he redeemed us. He paid for us. He paid our bill. Woo! And I don't know about you, but that's good news. Yeah, God is my redeemer. And, and, when, and, when, when, and, and watch this. I'm getting so excited. The fact that God loves you and I so much enough to send his son, the fact that his son would volunteer, they say, God, dad, send me. The fact that that happened means that we are valuable and priceless to God. So I need to come here for a minute. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I need you right now to get up out of that mess and hold your head up, hold your heart up and say to the world, I am valuable unto God. I am priceless unto the Lord. God has redeemed me. Mm, that is good news. That is shouting material right there. So for anybody who's struggling with depression, anybody who's struggling with bereavement, anybody who's struggling with doubt or fear or anxiety, I need you to let that go and shake it off because you are valuable and priceless. It done what I'm not what I'm not saying is watch this Please don't say what I didn't say. See, see, I'm not trying to, 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 to belittle 
what you what you or I have had to deal with. I'm not trying to make it uh, minuscule, but what I am trying to tell you is that the master has miracles that are mightier than what you, your mess. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me say that again. The master has miracles that are more mightier than your mess. So that means whatever you and I are going through, God has got us. God, he says it right there. I have redeemed you. And I like this. Mm. I like this in the text because God is speaking directly to you and I. He's not, we're not hearing it a uh, third and fourth party. We're hearing it directly from God. He's basically saying, I've paid the price through my darling son, Jesus Christ, for you. That means you can hold your head up. That means you can hold your heart up and walk like one of the Christian soldiers that you are. Listen, if you are looking for reasons to remain encouraged, here they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wrote a sermon about it. Want to hear it? Here it go. The first reason is I am God's creation. The second reason is God is my redemption. The third reason that listen, the third reason that we should remain encouraged is I am God's possession. Mm. Had to slow down right there. I really need you to get this part. Watch this. If you're looking for reasons to remain encouraged, and from time to time, all of us are. Nobody, I mean nobody, is happy and joyful all the time, especially when you're going through some stuff. Come on, come on, Mr. 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 Strong Man. Come on, Miss Miss Strong Wheels. I understand. Trust me, I understand that you don't want everybody to be all up in your business. You don't want uh, everybody always to, to 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 be knowing what be knowing to know what's going on with you on the inside. I get that, but I've got to let you know that you don't have to hang on to those negative feelings and just bottle them up because God has got you and I so much so that He's given us reasons to remain encouraged. The Bible says that we are God's creation. The Bible says that God is our redemption, but it also says that I am, somebody claim this right now, I am God's possession. And you and I being God's possession means we don't have to go through what we're going through alone. Mm. Says it right there in verse 1c. I'm in Isaiah 43, verse 1c. It says this. It says, I have summoned you by name. You mm, are mine. I need somebody to make that personal. I, somebody say it right with me. I am his. I am God's. It says it right there in the text. I have summoned you by name. What that means is every morning that you wake up, mm, I'm trying to contain myself. Every morning that I wake up, every morning that we wake up, God calls us. We wake up because God called me us by name. Uh, uh, this morning, this morning, I'm reminded that, uh, that, 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 you know, about an hour ago, hour or so ago, I went in my son Chancellor's room. He's 14 years old, uh, uh, pretty much uh, getting taller than I am. Somebody pray for us. Uh, Chancellor, Chancellor was uh, sleeping soundly in his room. Now, I mean, my family, we, we, we love to sleep and we love to get our sleep on. But Chancellor, he was sleeping extra comfortable. I mean, he sleeps so good when you look at him. It's like, boy, I just want to go to sleep looking at Chancellor. But Chancellor was soundly asleep. And, and and I began, watch this, to call his name. I said, good morning, Chancellor. Uh, it's time to get up. It, it, it's time to get up. And and Chancellor began to stir around. He he grunted a little bit. I said, Chancellor, come on, man. I need you to get up so you can grab you some breakfast and, and, and be on time to log on to online worship. I need you to be on time for online worship. And, 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 and I called his name. He grunted. I said, did you hear what I said? Chancellor said, yes. Uh, uh, and groggily, and he he kind of kind of rolled back over, but I knew he was awake. And as I left the room, I, I I felt for a minute like yeah, I had really done something. I woke up somebody who was asleep. But you know what? I, immediately in my spirit, I was reminded and remembered that it wasn't me. <clears throat> it wasn't my voice that actually woke 
chancellor up this morning. Come on, somebody, I, I pray you're going to get this. Because before I said anything, matter of fact, before I even entered the room, our Heavenly Father was already there and he was calling Chancellor by name, allowing Chancellor to breathing to ebb and flow, allowing Chancellor's heart to, to beat and pump, allowing Chancellor's mind and the faculties of his, his limbs to begin to work and operate like only God can do because we are God. God's possession and God calls us by name and the same thing that he did for Chancellor he did for me so I could call Chancellor and the same thing he did for us he's doing for you every single day because he knows you by name the fact is the fact is that he knows us by name means and lets me know that he knows what I'm dealing with. He knows what you're going through. He knows what your struggles are. And he's right there working it out with you and for you every step of the way. God says in his word, you are mine. And what that means is he is laying claim to you. I don't know who you are. I don't know what's going on in your life, loves and labors. But what I do know is this, God is laying claim to you right now. And when he's claiming you, he's claiming your situations and your circumstances so he can work it out. It's kind of as if uh, somebody who's related to you or somebody who's close to you, when they're introducing you, they say, uh, yeah, yeah, that's my husband or that's my wife. Uh, this is my son or this is my daughter. This is my mother or my father. This is my friend or my loved one. Well, it's just like that. And you know how good you feel when somebody close to you is claiming you? Yeah, that's mine. They're mine. Well, can I help you this morning? God is saying the same thing about and to you and I right now. He's mine. She's mine. Put your name right there. So-and-so is mine. Gary is mine. Valencia is mine. Chancellor is mine. Sangrid is mine. Joseph, Joshua uh, is mine. Uh, uh, Takia is mine. Put your name in the blank. Cedric is mine. Whoever under the sound of my voice is listening to this message right now, God is saying you are mine. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, listen, listen. If you are struggling ever and looking for reasons to remain encouraged, God gives them to us right here. If you're looking for reasons to remain encouraged, the first reason is I am, God says, listen, uh, we are God's creation. Yeah, 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 we are God's creation. God is my or our redemption. We also understand we can remain encouraged because I am God's possession. But lastly, watch this. The reason to remain encouraged is God is my protection. Yeah. Woo. God, God, God is my, my protection. When you're going through what you're going through, dealing with what you're dealing with, struggling with what you're struggling with, hurt like you've been hurt. Watch this. You can remain encouraged. It's not a pipe dream. This is not a, a fantasy. This is real. You and I, excuse me, can remain encouraged because by saying I am God's creation, understanding God is my redemption, by shouting I am God's protection and remembering God is, um, God is my protection. I'm God's creation. God is my redemption. I am God's possession. God is my protection. Right there in verse two, and then we're going to get out of here. This is what it says. It says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. In other words, what the, what the, the, word, the text is tended to teach us is he's got us covered. Now, I don't know what your struggle is. As a matter of fact, let me ask you this question. What's your problem? <laughs> what, what's your pain? What, what's your predicament? I gotta let somebody know that God has got us covered because God is my protection. He says that regardless of what you and I have to deal with, we have to deal with it 
with him. In other words, he's got us surrounded. So when people are coming at you left and right and wrong, when you are feeling like you're feeling and it's bringing you down, when you're feeling pain and, and problems and predicaments and the weight of life is weighing you down, God is my protection. He's stronger than any raincoat. He's stronger than any armored car. He's stronger than any Captain America shield. He's God and God alone. And whenever I need him, He's right there. All you got to do is call on him. It doesn't take a whole lot of fluffery word, fluffy words. It doesn't take a whole lot of mess uh, and, and oil. What it takes is, Lord, save me. Because God, you said in your word, I'm yours. And I want to be yours. And you are mine. And now that we have this relationship, now that I know that God has got me, now I can be encouraged to go on. Is there anybody here under the sound of my voice and you've been struggling with some pain, you've been struggling with some problems, you've been struggling with whatever you've been struggling with? Well, God has got you right now. Somebody say yeah. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody tap some hearts on your screen. Tap in the chat room. God has got me so I can now go on. Glory, <laughs> hallelujah, and thank you, Jesus. Woo, <laughs> that means that's good news to me. <laughs> and I pray that that's good news to you because watch this. What that tells me is that in spite of me, in spite of what I'm struggling with, in spite of what I'm dealing with, God has got it because he has got me. And listen, I don't know, I say it all the time, I don't know exactly what you're struggling with. I don't know ex exactly what you're dealing with. I don't know exactly what you've been fighting, but I do know that God wants to not just fight it with you. Listen to me, he wants to fight it for you. So whatever it is, take this time right now to turn it over to the Lord. God has got you. He wants us to remain encouraged because we're his. He's protecting us. He's bought us with the price. We are, he's calling us by name. He's claiming you. And if you've ever felt alone in your, your pain, your problems, or your situations, I gotta let you know, you're not alone. You're not alone. He's right there in your relationship. He wants to be there right there in your finances. He wants to be there with your health. He wants to be there with you and your children. He wants to be there with the, the loss of that loved one. He wants to be there. But the thing is, you got to let him. The Bible says, Lo, I stand at the door and I knock. In other words, God is waiting for us to let him in. So listen, if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, Today can be the first day of the rest of your life. And also, if you have received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, yet you struggle with your relationship, today can be your day of renewal, of reset, and, 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 and getting away from the recoil. I'm going to pray a closing prayer. And if you've never accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, during this closing prayer, I want you to say these words. I want you to say, Jesus, come into my heart. Because I believe that you died, was buried, and rose again for my sins. And if you have been baptized, if you, have, if you are a believer, I want you just to repent unto God and say, God, forgive me. I need you to take over my life right now, anew and afresh, because I want to remain encouraged in you. Okay? Let's pray together. Father God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you right now for this day, this time, and this opportunity. God, we pray that you would continuously speak to our hearts. Lord, look inside of our hearts right now. If there's anything in there that's not like you, please remove it. Please make us better, brighter, bolder, all for your glory. Lord, we want to remain encouraged because you have called us by name. You are our protection. We are your possession. You are, we are your creation and you are our God. So Father, renew us, refresh, grow us, guide us, lift us up, O oh Lord, 
as we lift up your holy and righteous name. Again, God, we'll remember to always give you the honor, the glory, and all the praise. And we want to tell you, thank you. We love you. We honor and adore you. And we pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Together in love, we say amen, amen, and praise God. I need somebody in the chat room right now to say hallelujah and glory to the Lamb of God. Listen, I want to thank you for joining with us today on this own online worship experience. My name is Gary Walsh Jr., pastor and servant leader here at Destiny Church. And I pray that you have a blessed and amazing day and rest of the week on purpose. Take care and God bless. Mm, God is so good. We'll see you uh, on Tuesday night, Transformation Tuesday. Join us. Take care and God bless. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Mm. Hard to believe. He chose me. He chose you. Hard to believe. Yeah. Thank you, God. God bless you. Heaven smile on you. We'll see you soon. Take care and God bless.